Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are out on the launch pad today with the Artemis 2 spacecraft. Uh, this is just kind of a retooled version of our Artemis 1. Notably that uh, command pod has been changed out to something a little less crappy. Uh, anyway, other changes to this include uh, upgrades to the um, service module, hopefully better power delivery systems, uh, and we're also using the Apollo uh, service module engine, which is a uh, version of the AJ-10 instead of just a standard AJ-10. The uh, upper stage, the second stage, is a little wider, uh, a little taller, and is also powered by a single J-2 instead of the four RL-10s of the previous version. Uh, below that, I've made some changes to the boosters. Um, just a little more fuel. There's still the six uh, E1 standards, although I do have the E1 Advanced unlocked. I don't have any research for it yet, so I was a little hesitant to use that on a crewed mission, because we've got uh, Val, Bill, and Bob with us on this one, the Orange Suitors. So it's um, going to be extra heartbreaking if this whole thing goes sideways. But, uh, I don't know. We've done in-orbit rescues before now, so let's get going. Ignition. And, alright, all engines are lit. Let's get these clamps off and get these guys to orbit. Uh, not bad. 1.19 uh, off the pad. That's not terrible, really, considering uh, the boosters do have a little more fuel, which means they weigh a little bit more. A little bit more of a struggle to get them going, but uh, we should... Their extra burn time will hopefully make up for it. So, um, all right. I'm just going to bring up these E1 engine information so that I can you know, lock that one up there. Uh, keep tabs on stuff. I just want to get some accurate data here so that I can compare them to the E1 Advanced, which I plan to swap out on these boosters probably the next time this uh, D1 or. Uh, DN1. I'm calling this one the DN1 block B.1. Uh, block B is referring to the upper stage. The dot one refers to the expanded boosters. There will be a DN1 B2, which is going to have the uh, upgraded E1s. All right. Well, uh, I need to start actually flying this rocket. I'm way past my gravity turn point, so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and speed some of this up, and I will see all of you in orbit. And here comes stage sep. Boom! Retros. Yeah, I added those two. And J2S is lit. Now, this thing is, has a lot more oomph behind it than those four RL-10s, but um, considering how close we are to uh, Apogee, uh, 12 seconds and falling, I'm going to maintain this angle for a little bit, but uh, this stage should have absolutely no problem putting us into orbit. So, uh, here's hoping. This is definitely a very fast-burning stage, so... Uh, Alright, I'm going to finish this out, and I will see you guys once we've circularized. We're coming up on shutdown. There it is. Alright, uh, 268, right, 248. Let's just uh, double check. Yep, awesome. It does satisfy the requirements of our contract here, so now all we really have to do is stay in orbit for like seven days. But we're gonna go ahead and ditch this J2 stage and try to send it home. There's Sep. Alright, we're just gonna RCS away. Grinding shamelessly against the uh, the fairings there. No big deal. It's not uh, not like it's only a game or anything. Alright, clear. Let's get these solar panels out. I know they're not doing us any good, but uh, let's Okay, we didn't alter our orbit enough for it to throw us out of the bounds of the contract. Let's get our antenna powered up and point this towards home for no apparent reason whatsoever. Really? <laughs> I guess it's a, a cone angle and that's probably too small. Alright, and our electric charge is dropping. Significantly, I might add. So hopefully we'll get into the daylight soon. 
and uh, we can top up these batteries. Although I think in the meantime we should probably deorbit our J2 stage. Uh, let's take get that quick save locked in. All right, and let's just go ahead and get this guy rotated into retrograde. I'd rather not have to go back and delete him later. Uh, not a whole lot of fuel left in it, but uh, there's also almost no weight to it, so this should be well more than enough. If I keep your eye on the G meter when I fire this engine up, I'm really curious to see how much oomph this is going to make. And ignition, wow. <laughs> Pegging the G meter out, it, like, instantly. Alright, that is very, very, very deorbited. There's still some fuel left in the tank, but, uh... I don't really need to check it. All right, looks like it's going to splash down safely in uh, the Atlantic there. We'll switch back to the Artemis. All right. Okay, so I guess we should really just uh, get this little guy in the daylight and make sure that our batteries are charging. Oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> We've got about three kilometers per second of delta V off the, this engine that we haven't even lit yet, which uh, I guess really with uh, the power of that J2 from our previous stage plus this stuff, we might actually be able to do some moon flybys with this. Um, man, they'd have to be super careful. I'm really not good at that, but all right, let's let's get around to the light and orient our solar panels accordingly. Ah, there it is. Daybreak. All right, so let, yeah, <laughs> let me just figure out which way I'm facing. We're going to go ass into the sun and make sure that we can get some kind of charge here on these batteries. All right, and almost. Uh, all right, we are showing a charge. Not much of one. That might be a problem. I was really hoping we'd uh, get a lot more charge out of these panels, especially uh, all four of them angled perfectly. Well, everybody in here seems to be happy and doing a good job. I'm glad that they're going to be sitting in these chairs for a week or more. Well, much to look at right now, but come, uh, I don't know, half an orbit or so, they should be just fine. We'll have plenty of nice stuff to look at. It's quite pretty. All right. Yeah, okay, so we've got like seven days and 20 hours that we've got to leave these guys up here. Uh, I've thought about doing that 90-day thing, but I think we've got some other stuff to attend to in the meantime. And really, I'm still just a little ticked off that Jaeger could spend a year orbiting the moon and we still don't get this 90-day challenge. Uh, I guess I want to see how much it's worth, like what they're going to pay me and how much reputation that's going to afford us because our reputation being so low is limiting a lot of the contracts we can take as well as how many contracts we can take. Uh, we did have that contract to radio science from space around Earth, so we'll just go ahead and take care of that real quick and maybe uh, enjoy the view out here a little bit. Why the hell not? Ooh, that's very nice. Almost nice enough to go ahead and turn off the UI. There we go. And bummer. <laughs> Boring landscapes. Oh, that's that's much better. Yeah, that might be a good winner today. Maybe? Maybe not. And into the nighttime we go. Well, our, our batteries will drain significantly. I really just hope that these guys have enough oomph left in there to uh, make it through. We'll go ahead and speed up time a little bit and let these guys, uh, I don't know, play cards or something. They made their radio check-in, that's all their their job really was, so <laughs> during all of this spinning around, um, not a whole lot left to do. So <laughs> I guess we'll be bringing these guys home next time and then after that we'll be uh, paying attention to our Saturn mission flyby. We have a correction burn there. Followed up swiftly by the uh, Jupiter Atmospheric Science Experimenter, we will make its arrival at Jupiter, which is super exciting time. So, 
Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I do appreciate it, and I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.